guys, this is Master McKinney from MT Performance. Today I'm going to show you how you can use uh, bands as feedback to your body to try and fix postural disorders. So uh, many postural disorders that we see in, in, in modern day society today is really this uh, kyphosis, lordosis uh, type of posture. And what is causing this is often uh, oftentimes a total compression, that we are more compressed than, than we should be, or it can be all these occupations that we have in front of our body as a human being that is uh, putting us into this uh, chronical position. So what this does is actually making us, uh, making us uh, less upright and making us lower than what we really are. So by decompressing the body, by fixing our, fixing our postural uh, issues, we can actually increase our total height. So if you, if you consider the analogy of a band or a stick, both being your spine, then think about what do you want your spine to be? Uh, strong, upright and tall, or this curved, weak spine? Today it's a very contemporary standard that we just grab a pair of dumbbells and exercise the weak side in order for us to try and get away from our postural dysfunction. It's a very basic and isolated approach that I would mean were, uh, were pretty outdated and really doesn't allow us to get to the bottom of the problem. This is why applying feedback to the body with bands is such a great method. So really what the bands are doing is they are pulling us to the other end of the extremes that we are actually trying to get away from. So in order for us to get away from this posture that is worsened by the bands, we have to exercise and activate the exact muscles that are weak in order for us to get away from this postural dysfunction that we find ourselves in. So bands are just another type of resistance, a resistance that are a bit more applicable to the, to the issue of fixing your postural dysfunction. So you can just need a regular rubber band as the length is, is best for these. Or you can use these, uh, what to say, customized bands for the purpose. So these are, I would say, more comfortable to the skin, especially if you, if you do these exercises shirtless. So it's really the same as a rubber band, the resistance is the same, the length is the same, but they are friendlier to the skin and they are friendlier to the environment. But in the end, if you choose a rubber band or a cotton band, doesn't really matter. So in this particular corrective exercise, you will need to wrap it around one of your shoulders. Then we're going to pull pretty hard here. This is a medium resistance, so I might need to pull a bit harder to get it behind the lumbar spine here and try and get as much resistance on the other side as possible so the resistance level on both shoulders are matching here. So wrapping it around the other shoulder and the mic seems fine. So you can see what this is doing. This is pulling me in the exact direction from which I want to get away from. So in order for me to get away from this posture I might need to retract the shoulders, posteriorly tilt the pelvis to get this more upright posture. And this is not about looking good. I don't give a shit about that. This is about engaging, engaging the back line of the body so we are not falling into this uh, weak position, engaging, the, engaging the, the hips, the pelvis and the core because this is where true core strength is. So in this corrective exercise, you're going to need a wall flat wall, place your feet, it really depends on your, uh, on your level of flexibility, but place your feet around 40 centimeters, maybe less, maybe more from the wall, keep a hip distance, keep your toes pointing straight forward, place your buttocks on the wall, place the back of your cranium on the wall, and what you then need to do is try and to uh, try and connect your lumbar spine to the wall by posteriorly tilting your pelvis and then try and get away from this postural position by spreading your lats retracting your shoulder blades so all of the back um, all of the back is really in touch with the wall as well as the back of your cranium so all points from the buttocks and up try and connect my spine Stay in this position and then really the rest is just breathing and keep this uh, constant tension.
So what this will do is not just fixing an isolated part of the postural issue. This is what dumbbells would do. Um, yeah, doesn't look so good when I'm trying to get it off. That's what it is with this. So if we want to get away from this postural issues by uh, doing these, uh, I don't know what they're called, radial uh, races, then you would only exercise the backside of your muscles. By doing this, you are getting the whole spine in alignment from the cervical area to the thoracic area to the lumbar area. So treating your body holistically instead of treating it by isolating. So this is why we're posteriorly tilting the pelvis to get the lumbar spine in touch with the wall. We are engaging the erector spinae by retracting the shoulder blades, engaging the lats by elevating a little bit in, the, in our shoulders. Um, and really, uh, yeah, of course, engaging the cervical spine by putting our back of the cranium into the wall. And really the rest is also playing a major role here. So we have this, uh, this resistance on our rib cage which is compressing us. So the rest that we do while keeping this, uh, this small but constant tension on the wall that is uh, slowly strengthening us, is that we are fighting this ribcage compression by breathing, of course, through the nose, expanding our diaphragm, thoracic cavity, in and out. So we are both improving our posture, but also improving our breathing capabilities. So with the next corrective exercise, we will try and remove the support that we uh, got from the wall and instead try and increase the resistance from what we will do here. So to get more stimuli on our muscles, we will stand in a transverse hold. The wrists are in fact the same, so we want to have this uh, hip width in our feet may be a bit wider than before to get a better, uh, a better base, a better stability. And then we we'll have our triple flexion, a slight flexion on the arms, a slight flexion on the, on the hips, and slight flexion on the knees. Of course, toes pointing straight forward. Then I want to find a perfectly straight spine if we, if we take a lateral view here. So I will posteriorly tilt my pelvis again, engage my erector spinae, retract my shoulders and then do nothing more than again ribcage breathing and stay in this stable and static position. So the demands here is a big, uh, are a bit big bigger because we have our oblique uh, constantly activating on one of the sides and also we are we're getting more into this protracted position on our shoulders both because of, uh, because of the bands but also because of the cable pulley that we need to, to hold in front of us. So this is utterly important here that you really engage your shoulder blades and retract them as much as possible to keep this constant tension during the exercise. So this is how you apply biofeedback to your body. Move intentionally, think independently, bye.